Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Center clears Tamil Nadu ordinance to lift ban on Jalli Kattu Union Cabinet to send it to the President Pranam Mukherjee for his assent. RBI Governor Urjit Patel appears before Public Accounts Committee concedes that people did face hardships after demonetization assures that the cash situation will normalize soon. Shivpal Yadav finds place in Samajwadi Party list of 191 candidates for the first three phases of Uttar Pradesh election, but suspense continues over announcement of an alliance with the Congress. Supreme Court defers hearing on petition seeking postponement of union budget till January 23rd. Centre files reply to Election Commission on procedure followed to delay budget presentation in 2012. And all eyes on Washington as the US prepares for the swearing-in of its 45th president. 70-year-old Donald Trump will be the oldest to take charge of the White House. Well, our top focus on the bulletin this evening, Union Environment and Law Ministries have cleared the Tamil Nadu government's ordinance to end the ban on the bull-taming sport of Jalli Kattu. The Union Cabinet is now slated to send it to the President Pranam Mukherjee for his assent. This was on a day when thousands of protesters stayed put at Chennai's Marina Beach, where they are camping since Tuesday, saying that they will not leave till the ban is lifted. Also today, the Supreme Court agreed to the centre's request that it should defer its verdict till next week in view of the law and order situation being created in the state. Let's take a look at how the story unfolded during the day. Responding to the Tamil Nadu government's efforts to get an ordinance passed to bypass the Supreme Court ban on Jalli Kattu, Attorney General Mukul Rohatgi opined that the centre could play a role. The Supreme Court has agreed not to pronounce judgment for a week because we think it will take a couple of days for the state and center to act together and then decide what is the best way forward, keeping in view the Prevention of Cruelty Act and keeping in view the 2014 judgment of the Supreme Court. On Friday, AIADMK MPs led by senior leader M. Tambidurai met Home Minister Rajnath Singh seeking his intervention in getting the ordinance. He assured our ordinance, what the Tamil Nadu government brought the ordinance, that file can be processed quickly, that can be sent to see that enabling uh, state government bring that ordinance uh, to see that jelly can be performed quickly. Tamil Nadu Sarkar ne ek prastav bana karke Ministry of Home Affairs ko bheja hai. Wahan se wo vishay bhi humare paas aa hai. Hum uske upar pura vichar karenge aur mujhe lagta hai ki bahut jaldi iska koi solution nikal jayega. The Tamil Nadu government has earlier used a rule that allows the governor to pass emergency rules. Such rules apply to subjects where both the state and the centre have jurisdiction, but the rule has to be approved by the president. On Friday, appealing for the protesters to end their agitation, Chief Minister O. Panir Selvam said the state's ordinance had been sent for President Pranam Mukherjee's approval. In the Avasara Chattam, Innum Vori Dinangalakul Prepika Padam, Maan Mukhu Bharata Paradamaru Urdi Elitabadi. Other Kana Mudu Mulu Utlip Mati Arsil in the Kadekum Yeneve, Jalikat Kana, Tadi Nika Pate, Tamalakatil, Jalikat to Wori the Nangal, Nadebara Ul and Elegil, Pora Tatil, Yudubatula, Pudumakal, Mana Kargal, Palvir Amipuli Sandavagal, Ayur, Tangal the Pora Tangle, Uranadia, Kaivada Vendimandri, Nan, and Bodu Ketukul Grind. Meanwhile, the protests seeking an end to the Jalli Kattu ban entered the fourth day, with both protesters and animal rights activists steeping up efforts to get a decision in their favour. With inputs from Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. LRBI Governor Urujit Patel today conceded before a public accounts committee that after the sudden ban on 500 and 1,000 rupee notes in November, people did face hardships. Speaking to PAC members on Friday, the RBI governor also informed that the central bank is in talks with service providers and banks to reduce digital transaction costs. He admitted that the demonetization step has had a short-term effect on the gross domestic product but assured them that the move will have a positive impact in the mid and long term. 
Urjit Patel was also asked by members of the Public Accounts Committee about suspicious transactions in cooperative banks. In reply, Patel said specific agencies like Financial Intelligence Unit and Income Tax Department were looking into abnormal deposits. The RBI governor has reportedly given an explanation to the PAC members and assured them that the cash situation will normalize soon. Meanwhile, President Pranam Mukherjee on Friday emphasized the significance of cooperative federalism at the Bengal Global Business Summit in Kolkata. Mukherjee said every state is important in the context of the entire nation. Addressing the summit, the president described the country as a growing economy with over 7.6% growth in the last decade. He appealed to the delegates of 29 countries present to consider investing in Bengal. The president said despite the recession of 2008, India is resilient and has prudent fiscal management. President Mukherjee also praised West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, stating that the necessary ingredients to restart the growth story had been created in the last few years. India is the conglomeration of the states. And India's essential strength lies in cooperative federalism, particularly in the process of its economic development. There is no contradiction in the development of a constituent unit <clears throat> along with the development of the nation as a whole. Well, ahead of the upcoming assembly elections in five states, RSS leader Manmohan Vaidya has stirred a fresh controversy by questioning caste-based reservation in jobs. Speaking at the Jaipur Literature Festival, Manmohan Vaidya said caste-based reservation should end and instead the government should focus on providing equal opportunities for all. Yeah. हमेशा के लिए ऐसा आरक्षण का प्रावधान रहे ना ये अच्छा नहीं है जल्द से जल्द इसकी आवश्यकता निरस्त होकर सबको समान अवसर देने का स्थान समय आना चाहिए ये भी उन्होंने कहा है और इसलिए वो आरक्षण की सीमा है बाकी अन्य आरक्षण के बदले में सबको अवसर अधिक दिए जाए शिक्षा अधिक दी जाए इस प्रकार प्रयत्न करना चाहिए इसके आगे आरक्षण देना in other news now, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh has said that independent thinking and free expression at Indian universities were under threat in the wake of unrest at the University of Hyderabad and Delhi's Jawaharlal Nehru University. He also said that attempts to suppress peaceful dissent is undemocratic. The former Prime Minister also said that political interference in academic appointments is highly short-sighted. Regrettably, independent thinking and free expression at Indian University are now under threat. Political interference in university curriculum and academic appointment is highly short-sighted. Recent attempts to interfere with free expression of the student community in Hyderabad Central University and Jawaharlal Nehru University are of particular concern. Attempts to suppress peaceful dissent are not only inimical to learning, they are also undemocratic. We must make every effort to protect the autonomy of our universities and to foster the right of our students to express ideas that powerful interests may not always agree with. Well, Samajwadi Party released its first list of candidates for 191 seats for the upcoming polls on Friday. Shivpal Yadav and Azam Khan were among those who have been given a ticket. However, there is still no clarity on whether the alliance with the Congress is on. Shiv Pal Yadav, the warring uncle of Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav, along with controversial State Minister Azam Khan, has made it to the first list of 191 Samajwadi Party candidates 
released on Friday. The ruling party's first list of candidates covered the first three phases of the seven-phase polling beginning on February 11th. The party has offered 18 seats to Congress in these three phases. Abhi to Congress ka pass se koi positive response abhi to nahi aaya. Ta chunaav shuru ho chuka. Ham log chahte bhajpa ko harane ke liye. Congress chahte unka shakti ko mujboot karne ke liye. Ta pahla lakshya bhajpa ka harana. Ta Congress gadbandhan mein raji ho jayenge bhajpa ko harana chahte hai to samajwadi party. जो सीट कांग्रेस को देना चाहते हैं कांग्रेस का वाहन चुवान सीट के ऊपर कांग्रेस का हक है ये चर्चा में इस तरह का कोई विषय तो नहीं था अगर ऐसा हुआ है तो मुझे मुझे अभी जानकारी नहीं मिली गठबंधन के लिए कोई अभी किसी भी तरह का कोई अवरोध तो नहीं आया मैं ये मानता हूँ गठबंधन हो कार्यकर्ताओं के सम्मान पर द समाजवादी पार्टी हैज ऑफर्ड सीट टू द कांग्रेस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द पोजिशन ऑफ देयर कैंडिडेट इन दू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व असेंबली पोल्स द एस पी इज रिपोर्टेडली इंसिस्टिंग ऑन कंटेस्टिंग ऑल सीट इन अमेठी एंड कैन स्पेयर वन फॉर कांग्रेस इन राय बरेली The two districts are considered Congress bastions. पांच साल अभूतपूर्व काम किए हैं माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी ने और इस सरकार में जो विकास कार्य हुए हैं वो इसके पहले किसी सरकार में नहीं हुए थे फिर से चुनाव जिताने के लिए और पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार बनाने के लिए माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी द्वारा जो काम कराए गए हैं वो पर्याप्त है और मेरा अपना ये विचार है मेरा अपना मानना है कि किसी भी गठबंधन की कोई आवश्यकता नहीं है The alliance talks apart. The inclusion of Shivpal in the first list of candidates indicates a reconciliation between Mulayam Singh Yadav and son Akhilesh Yadav. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Election Commission today asked the Cabinet Secretariat for fresh details on the procedure followed by the then UPA2 government in postponing the presentation of the union budget in 2012. The opposition had sought that the budget presentation be postponed in view of the assembly elections in five states. They allege that budget announcements might help the ruling party to influence voters. The centre, however, defended its decision, stating that the union budget is an annual constitutional exercise and covers the entire country. It also stuck to its decision to advance the budget presentation, arguing that it was done to ensure that the budgetary allocations were made well in time. The budget session this year will start from January 31st, and the union budget and the economic survey are slated to be presented the day after. The Supreme Court will hear the plea seeking postponement of the union budget on January 23rd. Usually, जब कभी भी चुनाव की घोषणा होती है, तो उस वक्त even budgeted work को शुरू नहीं किया जाता, क्योंकि उसका असर, उसका influence order के ऊपर पड़ता है। तो अब ये अगर आप budget पेश करेंगे, फ़रवरी में तो उसका असर और आप पॉपुलिस्ट स्कीम जो भी लाएंगे वो अगर मतदाताओं को अट्रैक्ट करने का आकर्षण करने का अगर उसमें मुद्दे हैं तो उसका परिणाम चुनाव पे हो सकता है well, प्रजा पार्टी मैस्कॉट इरोम शर्मिला इज स्लोली रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम हर 16 ईयर लॉन्ग हंगर स्ट्राइक and with elections just around the corner she is now working hard on reaching out to voters and voice her agenda as a new politician our correspondent akile suman spoke to rome about her plans and what she sees in the future mainly the focus will be on repeal of abspa and as well as bringing right to justice to all and economically independent assembly election is for overall development and control and administration of the states so why only afspa you want to put as your agenda as for me i want to focus on afspa repeal the draconian law in a democratic country do you plan to make an alliance with any other party or you want to fight the election alone just Single out um, a regional party based on ideology and principle, but not on muscle and money power. But um, those uh, left party um, front um, consisting of around seven different parties um, suggested uh, us to join them for a pre-poll alliance. Uh, to strengthen um, so as to encounter with the 
uh, most powerful BJP and the Congress parties. So do you want to make any alliance with any of them? I think it's also good um, for um, <laughs> making the government. You, you are feeling that you will form the government or you are fighting for sitting in the opposition? If possible, on the ruling seat. Election requires lots of money and resources. Do you think that you can manage all those things? Mm, if we want mm, mm, to come mm, to see real democracy in the society, we really want to depend on people's support. Well, moving on now, former BJP MP Navjot Singh Sidhu, who joined Congress a few days back today, accused the Badals of having looted Punjab in their 10 year rule. Sidhu alleged the Badals had a direct conflict of interest with the state exchequer. He also told the voters that there was a pressing need for change in the state. The Congress candidate claimed that he had never seen such resentment among people against the government. Cricketer turned politician Sidhu is fighting the assembly polls from Amritsar East seat on a Congress ticket. ਇਹ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਜ ਉਜਾਗਰ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲਾ ਬਾਦਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਲੁੱਟ ਕਸੁੱਟ ਦੀ ਨੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਨੀਅਤ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦਾ ਪੇਟ ਪਾੜ ਕੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਘਰ ਪਰੇ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਲੱਖਾਂ ਕਰੋੜ ਪੈਸਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਨਿੱਜੀ ਸੰਪਤੀਆਂ ਬਣ ਗਈਆਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦਾ ਹੱਕ ਸੀ Well, here's a roundup of the other election-related news in Paul Puri. 695 nomination papers out of nearly 1,950 were rejected in Punjab after scrutiny for the 4th February assembly polls. Over 1,200 nominations were found valid and 695 invalid, while three cases were kept pending, one in Hoshiarpur and two in Mansa. The last date of withdrawal of candidature is 21st January and the counting of votes will take place on the 11th of March. Filing of nominations kicked off for the first phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh to be held on 15th February. The second phase will cover 67 assembly constituencies spanning 11 districts of Uttar Pradesh including Bareilly, Bijnor, Kheri, Charanpur, Moradabad, Shah Jahanpur, Badao, Uh, Rampur, Sambal, Pilibit and Amroha. The nominations for the second phase of uh, polling will continue till 27th of January, while scrutiny would take place on the 30th of January. The nomination for assembly elections in Uttarakhand began today. The polling for all 70 constituencies will be held in the state on February 15th in a single phase. Nomination would be filed uh, up till 27th January and scrutiny would take place on 30th of January. February 1st is the last date for withdrawal. Going on to some international news now, dignitaries have arrived for the swearing-in of Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States. Ahead of the ceremony, security has been tightened in Washington. There was heavy deployment of personnel as anti-Trump protesters dressed in black masked on the streets holding placards against the incoming administration. Trump will be the oldest American president to take charge of the White House. World attention is fixed on America as it prepares for the swearing-in of its 45th president. 70-year-old Donald Trump will be the oldest to take charge of the White House. The swearing-in of the business tycoon will take place on the steps of the US Capitol and will be followed by a parade to the White House along streets thronged with spectators. Ahead of the ceremony, Washington has been turned into a virtual fortress with thousands of people, both supporters and opponents, expected to arrive for the inauguration. Trump's ascendancy to the top post has been marred by several protests not only in the US but also across the world. Ahead of his swearing-in ceremony, Washington and New York saw thousands of people taking to the streets to express their displeasure with his incoming administration. Protests were also held in London as well as Philippines capital Manila over Trump's views about women and illegal migrants. Listen, the man 
needs help. He's not well. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry to say it, and I don't say that to be mean, and I, I say it with actually love in my heart because I don't believe in picking on people who are mentally unstable. And I think that that diagnosis would come from anybody who knows what a malignant narcissist is. We stand in solidarity with the American people, with the people of the world who are protesting the inauguration of uh, U.S. President Donald Trump. Uh, Filipinos from Manila to Washington to New York are joining uh, protest actions. Meanwhile, caution prevailed in the global financial markets ahead of Trump's inauguration. U.S. dollar, the Asian stock markets, as well as the German stock market DAX slumped ahead of the ceremony on Friday. Die Börsen Asien und in Europa sind nervös. Wir haben die Amtseinführung von Trump, es beginnt eine neue Zeit, aber im Vergleich zu frühen Amtseinführungen wissen wir nicht sehr viel Genaues, was er denn vorhat, gerade auch wirtschafts- und handelspolitisch, außer vielleicht in zwei Wörtern America first. Aber es muss ja mit Leben gefüllt werden und die Unsicherheit ist hier zu spüren, definitiv. Trump, meanwhile, arrived in Washington on Thursday with his family to kick off a weekend of festivities. He attended a concert at the Lincoln Memorial on the eve of his presidential inauguration where he pledged to unify America. This journey began 18 months ago. I had something to do with it, but you had much more to do with it than I did. I'm the messenger. I'm just the messenger. And we were tired, and I love you. Believe me, I love you. We all got tired of seeing what was happening. And we wanted change, but we wanted real change. And I look so far forward to tomorrow. We're going to see something that is going to be so amazing. Trump had stunned the world by winning the November U.S. presidential election, beating the Democrat candidate Hillary Clinton. His swearing-in will be witnessed by exiting President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. Three other former presidents, George Bush, Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter will also attend the ceremony along with Hillary Clinton. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, here's a roundup with the other international news and global buzz. News from Africa, where tension prevails in Gambia after a Dama Barrow was sworn in as the country's president. The country's ruler, Yaya Jame, who is in power since... Uh, a 1994 coup has refused to step aside. West African armies have begun an operation aimed at installing the country's new president. A total of 7,000 troops from Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, Togo and Mali would be involved in the operation. On Thursday, Senegalese troops entered Gambia in support of Barrow. Barrow is presently in Senegal and has said that uh, he will not return to his country, Gambia, until the military operation comes to an end. At least 20 people died, 70 injured and more than 30 others remain missing after a commercial building caught on fire and collapsed on Thursday morning in Tehran. Rescue workers in Tehran were desperately hunting for firefighters trapped under the rubble after a fire today led to the collapse of Iran's oldest high-rise, the 15-storey Plasco building. The rescue operation is still underway. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has ordered a thorough investigation. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov today said that Russia has observed positive signs in the Syria peace process. Lavrov further added that Moscow sees a meeting in the Kazakh capital next week as an important step towards establishing a framework for talks taking place in Geneva. Militants from the Islamic State group have destroyed part of the Roman amphitheatre in the ancient city of Palmyra. Syria's antiquities chief said that the tetrapylon, a group of four pillared structures which were mainly modern replicas, has also been ruined. The jihadists recaptured the UNESCO listed archaeological site in December from government troops. Irina Bokova, director general of UNESCO, said what she described as cultural cleansing by violent extremists had resulted in an immense loss for the Syrian people and for humanity.
Well, the 45th uh, president of the United States is being sworn in. Let's cut across live to Washington, D.C. and what, see what's happening there. Ladies and gentlemen, the 39th president of the United States, Jimmy Carter and Mrs. Rosalind Carter. Well, this certainly seems like the cavalcade of Donald Trump, of course, uh, leading up to uh, Capitol Hill, where he will be sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. Uh, uh, the swearing-in ceremony will take place at 12 noon local time, which is uh, in uh, about uh, an hour from now, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, as you can see, uh, this seems like the cavalcade of Trump there being taken to uh, Capitol Hill, where uh, uh, the new president of uh, the... United States will be sworn in. There you have it, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, the Democratic candidate who lost to uh, Donald Trump in the end, uh, and her husband, uh, Bill Clinton, being uh, uh, shown their seats, of course. Uh, this is uh, uh, the process, a ceremony that takes place where all the former presidents of the United States gather, uh, while uh, just before the president then finally appears and uh, is sworn in. Well, that's it on this edition of the news tonight. Have a good night.